Welcome guys and girls to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to look at a real world stateless app running on Kubernetes. All right, uh, let's start with the big picture. So my goal as an instructor uh, to teach you guys and girls how to think about designing an application on EKS. I mean, my goal is not to just show you this specific solution because chances are in your enterprise, you won't be needing to do this guestbook application. Uh, but what you should learn is how to stitch together the components and how to design the whole application. Okay, so generally, uh, most of the applications in real world follow three tiers. Uh, so basically a traffic might be coming either from internet or from internal, and then it hits a front-end application. And then front-end application traffic goes to the back-end application where there could be some business logic, some more computations, and back-end app reaches out to a database to either some fetch some data, insert, query, all that good stuff. So how does this translate to uh, Kubernetes constructs? Uh, so basically, you have to have a service, right? We learned about service. Uh, we do not expose our pods directly to uh, internet. You need a service and this service needs to be external. Uh, and then the front-end app can talk to back-end app using another service. And in this case, the service is internal because the traffic is internal. And then the back-end app talks to the database using another service. Just to make sure this database, we are assuming it's running as a container in the pod. Uh, but if you guys and girls are using database like Amazon RDS or Amazon Aurora, uh, you don't need to create a service because that databases are not running inside a pod, uh, but those are managed service. So AWS does the load balancing and all that good stuff for you. So how would this look with actual Kubernetes components? Okay, so the traffic will hit a service and that service will route the traffic to the pods which are running containers for the front-end app. So can you guys and girls think about what kind of service this should be? So this service should be load balancer. It accepts external traffic and also balances the load. Okay, then uh, the container for front-end app will interact with the service uh, and then reach out to the pod which is running container for the back-end app. Uh, can you guys and girls think about what kind of service this should be? Remember the traffic is internal, no internet should hit this service directly. Yep, so this service should be of type cluster IP. Similarly, the pod running the container for backend app will hit the database containers through another cluster IP service. All right, so that was an actual three tier app architecture. But in reality, the guestbook project that we are doing is simpler than that. Uh, there is no separate backend app, if you guys and girls notice, uh, because the code is simple enough. The traffic from internet hits the front-end application, and the front-end application goes to database and fetches some information or inserts into uh, the database. Uh, so there is a little bit of twist. So in the Kubernetes construct, uh, traffic from internet hitting the load balancer service, and then it goes to the pod, uh, which is running container for the front end application. Uh, but here there are two different services internally. Uh, for the write to database, it goes to one service. Uh, we call it the write service. All the write goes to Redis master. So Redis is the database in this case. Uh, so all the writes get directed to the Redis master. And we also have Redis worker or Redis slave. And all the data gets replicated from Redis master to Redis worker or Redis slave. And then any uh, read traffic that comes, it redirects into this read service. Uh, and then it goes to the Redis uh, worker pods and, and read the data and send it back. All right, uh, so with that in mind, uh, let's take a look at the code. All right, so these are the instructions. Uh, so what we are gonna do is go through each of these, but at the same time, uh, look at the manifest file and see what's going on. So from the AWS documentation, it links to the GitHub page. Uh, so this is the GitHub page. I cloned the entire repository. Um, so let's go step by step. 
So first step, it's creating the Redis master replication controller and it's referencing to the file redis master controller.json. Uh, all right, so let's uh, open it up in our trusty Visual Studio code. Okay, let's open up a redis master controller. Okay, the kind is a replication controller. Uh, replicas one, so we are running only one replica of the master. Uh, the selectors are app redis role master. Uh, and then uh, if we go down, uh, this is the template and the metadata. We are using app redis role master. And on the, under the spec, we have the containers and the image it's loading is Redis version 2.8.23 and it's exposing it uh, in the port 6379. Okay, I also have EKS cluster up and running, nothing fancy. I created the cluster, gave it a name guestbook-demo. Uh, okay, so let's deploy this uh, Redis master controller. All right, kubectl apply-f Redis master controller.json. Next, we are going to create the Redis uh, master service. So if we open this up, okay, so this is a service uh, and then there is no service type specified and we know if there is no service type specified by default, it's cluster IP kind of service. Okay, and the selector is app Redis uh, role master. So if we go back to Redis master controller, uh, you can see the container for the Redis master is coming up with labels app Redis role master which exactly matches the selector. So basically all the traffic coming to this service is gonna be routed to the Redis master. All right, uh, so let's run this. Okay, kubectl apply-f redis master service.json. All right, now create the redis slave or worker replication controller. Okay, the kind is replication controller. Uh, there will be two replicas for the worker. So generally the read traffic is higher than the write traffic uh, in a traditional application. So that's why there are two replicas so that it could be load balanced across uh, two different uh, replicas. Okay, so if we scroll down, uh, the label of this would be app Redis and role slave and the container image is this. All right, so pretty, pretty straightforward, very similar to the uh, master controller. Uh, so let's uh, run this. Okay, on the database side, last thing is the Redis uh, slave service or Redis worker service. So this will be very similar to the Redis master service as well. Again, the service, there is no service type, so it will spin up a cluster IP kind of service. And the selectors are Redis and slave. So basically any traffic that hits this service is gonna go to the Redis uh, workers. All right, let's run this. Kubectl apply dash f redis dash slave dash service dot json. Okay, now the front end, uh, the guestbook uh, replication controller. Let's take a look at this JSON file. Okay, kind replication controller. Uh, replicas are three. Selector is app guestbook. So we're gonna spin up the front end container with this label app guestbook. Here we go, template. Uh, labels app guestbook and the container name is guestbook colon version 3. And the container port is exposing itself on the port uh, 3000. Also giving a name of HTTP server for that container port. So let's run this. Okay, kubectl apply dash f guestbook controller.json. All right, and the last would be a guestbook service. Uh, so this will have a service type uh, because we don't want cluster IP for this, right? Uh, so if we scroll down, here we go, type is load balancer. So in AWS EKS, it's gonna spin up a classic load balancer and the selector app is guestbook. So this is uh, same label as guestbook controller uh, for the front end application. And we see that in the ports, uh, the load balancer is actually accepting traffic on port 3000, uh, which is different than port 80. So when we uh, use the URL of the load balancer, we have to explicitly specify uh, the port 3000. And it is uh, directing the traffic to target port with the name HTTP server. Uh, so we saw on the guestbook controller or the front end uh, containers, uh, the port is exposed at 
3000 with the name HTTP server. So any traffic that hits this load balancer is gonna go to the guestbook controller. All right, so let's run this one. Okay, kubectl apply dash f guestbook service dot json. All right, so let's check if all the services are up and running. All right, seems like uh, we do have the URL for the load balancer. If we come to AWS console and go to uh, load balancers, we should see our load balancer. Okay, here we go. The load balancer is up and running. Let's check if the, all the instances are registered. Okay, the status in service, we are good to go. All right, let's copy the URL for the load balancer. You can either do it from here or you can do it from AWS console as well. Okay, and then paste it. Uh, but now we have to put port 3000. All right, so this is our uh, guestbook service. Uh, so let's put a name. All right, click submit. So see, you can uh, put the name and the name will just be here. So whatever is coming here is coming through the uh, read service and whatever you are putting in this uh, text box and click submit, it's going to the right service. We are making the whole justice leak. If you are liking this video, please check out my new EKS course in Udemy. The course goes over Kubernetes basics. It teaches you all the Kubernetes concepts you need to know to get started with EKS. No separate course needed. Then it goes over EKS basics, then logging and monitoring, then EKS advanced concepts, uh, then securing EKS, Fargate, deploying EKS with DevOps, and then real world EKS projects. This whole course is built based on my real world experience. So I go deep on areas that you will use in your actual real world projects. I'll give the discounted link below in the description. So just to reiterate, uh, don't just think specifically about this application. Uh, think about how will you design your Kubernetes application running on EKS, right? Think about different concepts that we learn throughout our course. Uh, service, different kinds of service, which kind of service you will use where, uh, how the one pod communicate with another pod, uh, all that good stuff. If you have any questions, comments you want to discuss uh, on this topic, uh, feel free to leave a comment below. I generally answer to all my comments. And if you like this video, if you think this was helpful, uh, click that like button, smash it if that's something you are into and subscribe. I have a bunch of other technical videos, deep dive discussions on AWS services, and also I have videos on how I switched to my career from mainframe to the cloud. All right, guys and girls, that's the video. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.